this worship team. This worship team has poured into my well-being quotient today. How about a round of applause for them? I'm so glad. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's hard to be in a state of grace when you have headaches, anxiety, back pain, when you're worried about tomorrow and not living today. And so as I'm sharing with you today, I want to help you put the odds in your favor so that when you walk out of here this afternoon, you've made some small changes that will lead to big shifts in your life. Unity has been such a big part of my journey the last almost 30 years. I did not grow up in, in, a, in a church family. I went to church, just many churches. And as Mindy and I were sharing over dinner last night, it just wasn't how my family rolled, even though the neighbors always felt compelled to take me to church. I had no idea what that meant until now that I'm older. I'm like, oh, they were trying to help me and pour into me. 30-ish years ago, I was in chiropractic college. And back in the day before we were on the movement with Deepak Chopra and Wayne Dyer, you guys know those guys, right? Well, back in the day, they used to come speak to chiropractic colleges because we believed in the message an inside-out philosophy. And Mark Victor Hansen, the author of Chicken Food Soup for the Soul, was at our chiropractic college. And his message, message resonated so much with me that I followed him to Unity Church of Overland Park. At that moment, I really realized why I had not really plugged in to a ch church community. Because it's really about love, and, and love is my, and kindness are my number one and two values. And after all the genetic work I've done, the genetic doctor said to me, I bet you people say you're kind. And it's because it's in my genes. And so that's, isn't that fascinating? But what I realized through the years is that we've got to do these little things to put the odds in our favor. And so Mary was just pouring into this church. And so I started hanging out there more and more. And I started to bump up against the essence of who I thought I was and wasn't. And I remember in... August of 1997, and I was in a state of crisis, anything from a state of grace. And I called Mary and said, something's wrong. I'm sabotaging my life. At that moment, I'd been in practice about six years. And by many people's standards, especially the outside world, I was having a very successful career, had a great practice, making money, seeing patients, changing lives, but something was missing inside of me. And so when I called Mary, Mary said, Michelle, I know what it is. You're missing joy. You're missing joy. And she says, you give it out to everybody else, and you forget to give it to yourself. And I'm a little bit of an acronym nerd, and as I was thinking of the word joy, journey, right? A journey with observation of yourself. And so today I'm going to encourage you to start to observe yourself. So you can dial in to what works for you and what doesn't. I'm guessing, if I give you a quiz right now, should you eat french fries or salad? On Fridays. Okay, on Fridays. <laughs> right, what, what, right. Should you sleep or stay up all night? Should you move or become an office potato? Should you hold your breath or breathe? Should you live in an uncluttered mind, body, and spirit, or a cluttered mind, body, and spirit? Should you have water or Diet Coke? Water. Should you get sunshine or stay inside all the time? Sunshine. Most of you got 100% except this guy up here who's with me with french fries, right? <laughs> so you got 100%, but here's the question. Why don't you do it? Why aren't you living these little simple things that you know sh you should do? This body came with an owner's manual, and it requires those things. So continuing my unity journey, Mary recommended I go to this place called the Hoffman Institute. And what was great about the Hoffman Institute, they helped me really plug into my authentic self. They helped me pull out all these beliefs I had as a girl. I remember when I was a kid, my mother used to say to me, I was skinny until I had you. <laughs> Woo. I mean, it's funny, but not, right? And then my first stepfather, my first of four fathers would say, if you keep eating like that, you're going to look just like your mother. And so you can see there were some wounds inside of me, and I really believed I made my mother sick. And it's taken me, it took me till about the age of 35 after really understanding the dynamics of the human body that I realized it was not me. It was part of her journey. And it's also part of my journey. And through the Hoffman process, I realized my soul picked her as my mother. And it picked the fathers in my life so that I would be standing here with you today. Take a breath on that. 
So anybody that's struggling with some of those family dynamics, that may be a way for you to say, you know what, let me wonder how that is just on this short today. Because we just have today, 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 today. And whether we get 20,000 of them if we live to be the age 54, if we get 40,000 of them we live to be the age 108, I don't know what it is for you. But I do know is all that we have is today. So Mary helped open that up in me. And then what happened, and to continue my unity story, I met a gal named Charlotte Shelton. And for those of you that don't know Charlotte, Charlotte was the CEO of Unity Village in Kansas City. And back in the day when Unity first started, Myrtle Fillmore and Charles Fillmore talked about the power of the body's innate ability to heal itself if we remove the interferences. Think about that. If we remove the interferences, the interferences of the way we're fueling our body, the way we're fueling our mind, the way we're fueling our soul. And so you can see one reason why I love being a chiropractor. As a chiropractor, we believe the body's sick because of three reasons. Thoughts, traumas, and toxins. Perfect alignment with the unity principles and message. So Charlotte, I got a chance to meet her, and she said to me, Michelle, we are going to revamp our publishing division. You've got the Daily Word. I saw it out here today. That's part of the uh, publishing division, but they're going to start publishing books again. I said, okay, well, I barely passed, passed English, and you can see I'm struggling to talk to you today. But... Um, <laughs> But I do have a business degree, and I think I can figure it out if good news is I can hire a writer and started really thinking about what do I share time after time? And that's where the seven habits we went over. And so my first book's called Wellness on a Shoestring, Seven Habits for a Healthy Life. And I know without a doubt, and I, if, you actually count, if you actually count all the habits, there's really about nine in there, but I was attached to the word seven. And I remember sitting with Mary Omwake, my minister, on a beach in Kauai, and, and Mary was so methodical, and she just owned it in her bones, and she said, what are the seven habits? And I would tell her, and she said, no, Michelle, you're missing gratitude, or you're, that's the one she said I was missing. I said, well, Mary, I, it's, it's seven habits. I can't have eight. She goes, well, figure it out. <laughs> you know? And so the first chapter is rest, reflect, rejuvenate. It's important you rest. I believe in every single cell in my body, one reason why our kids are struggling so much is they're not sleeping. And one reason you're struggling is because you're not sleeping. I believe sleeping is like number one, close to hydration, number two. And the way I think about hydration is, do you want to be a grape or a raisin? Anybody in the room? <laughs> What's the difference between a grape and a raisin? <laughs> hydration. Hydration. So if you leave here today and all you do is say, you know what, I'm going to get some sleep so I can dial into the essence, so I can hear the Holy Spirit talking to me. You cannot hear the Holy Spirit when, you are, when you're exhausted when you have headaches, when you have back pain, and you're going to have more pain when you don't sleep because the body needs sleep to rejuvenate. Rest, reflect, rejuvenate. Breathe. Move. And right and smack dab in the middle of the book, because I got people kind of getting that, is free your space. And the magic of what I teach people is how do you free your space, mind, body, spirit? I know right now, if you dialed in and you thought about how you feel in this moment and you're feeling less than awesome, you can say, hmm, what did I do yesterday? Did I take time to sleep? Did I drink too much last night? Did I stay and watch too much Netflix? Or was I around the wrong people? You know what, I went out and I had um, some Dairy Queen right before I went to bed, and I'm wondering why I'm feeling a little dissonance in my gut today. Dial in, observe, observe what's going on in your body, joy. Dial in to the journey observing your body and well-being. But not just what you're eating and those things, but, but, but really think about the thoughts you're having. The thought I was having when I was 31 years old and I started sabotaging my life was that I was a fraud. I call that the five-letter F word, not the four-letter, but the five-letter. But it will four-letter up your life, right? Because you are always <laughs> wondering if you're enough, and what we talk about a lot of times, and be one of our good friends, Bukeka, talks about, you are worthy. I am enough. And I'm going to tell you right now in this moment, you're enough. You are worthy of all the good in your life. And when you have the lessons that come through your life, in my case, whether it's a bike accident or recently I had a, a ransomware attack at my office. You know, when you guys talk about July 2019, I'm like, what July? Because I was busy taking care of my business. And a couple other Julys ago, it was a flood and that, that took out about four to six weeks of my life. But what I do know, there's life after that. 
And so how do you free your space so that you will do the things you need to do to have the life that you're designed to have? And for me, I had to heal my heart so that I would take better care of myself. One of my top five favorite quotes is, when you heal the heart, you will heal your body because you love yourself enough. You love yourself enough to say, you know what, I'm going to have water before I have my coffee. I love myself enough that I could have that cookie, but I'm going to take the, that live food instead. I love myself enough that these people, some people are maybe a little bit toxic to your environment. And it's okay to start to limit your time with them, even if they're your mother, right? And so how do you really start to pour into your heart? And then, of course, it's important that we get vitamin D. You live in the sunshine state. Is this called the sunshine state? It is. Okay, I thought, I thought so. I've not, my family lives in Tampa, but I've not spent as much time here as I probably will in the future. How do we get more sunshine? And sunshine, not only does it light up our life, but it helps our body get this hormone called vitamin D. In case you don't know, vitamin D is a hormone. And if your kids aren't on it, they probably should be. I've tested thousands of people through the years and maybe had, on one hand, five people that had enough had adequate vitamin D. And I know you're maybe out in the sunshine. But, but really think about knowing that number. And there's some new research talking about vitamin D with K and then if you have an autoimmune disease. So I'm going to leave that sit there, but that's a really big deal, vitamin D. And then think about how do I get more live food? If you want to have more life, you've got to eat more live food. And so this afternoon when you go have lunch, I want you to look at your plate and wonder and just have this curiosity, how much live food am I having? And the more life you want, the more live food you need to eat. The more life you need to eat. And of course, the essential fatty acids, we went through the fat-free craze, which changed our brains, and now fat-free diets are in. I mean, fat diets are in, keto diets and all these things. So the confusion really does not have to be there if you just dial in to your own observation. In my second book, as I was out teaching on wellness and a shoestring for seven habits, I started wondering, well, why aren't people doing these? I was just curious. And so I dialed into my own awareness and said, okay, well, what it, what's it like for my clients? How do they get on board? And how have I gotten on board? And it's really three E's, engage, energize, and enrich, three steps to vibrant health. And that's my second book. And, uh, and, and the gauge has four parts to it. That's the magic of life. And you're here today, whether you're online or whether you're in-house, you are engaged in the journey. And the gauge has four parts. The first one is kind of thinking about what your purpose is. And if your purpose may not be to be a wellness advocate like I am, your purpose may be to hold space for somebody. You know, my, I, have a, I have a phenomenal partner, and for years she held space for me to do what I'm doing. And I said to her recently, we were just at a, an award ceremony where um, I was getting honored, and I said to her, I said, you get tired of coming to things like this? She goes, no, I don't get tired of watching you shine your light. I'm here to help you shine your light. And I'm here to help take care of things. And I also will sh I, my light also gets shown as well. And that was a question I had this week. And that was a little bit of my self-doubt. Do you get tired of it? So you have your purpose. And then you know, have your why. For me, my why is because many, many reasons. My little self is because I want to be like my mother. My big self is I know it's my calling. I know it's my divine destiny that I'm standing right here with you today. So thank you for inviting me. After you know those two things, then you have to get a plan. And that plan can be tricky. I use a plan around whole person health. It's not just about what you fuel your body with and how much movement you have and are you getting your adjustments. It's also about the energy and the vibration you're around, the smells you're around, the sounds you're around. It's also about your spirit. and It's about the, the psycho-spiritual aspect of being well and healing yourself. So I'd encourage you all and invite you all. You're going to get a, a complimentary ebook from me. From me, Alice will make sure you guys get it if you want it, and it will walk you through these principles of whole person health, and you can start to dive in. Because I don't know if you're as tired as I am as hearing it's all about diet and exercise, because it's not. If that worked, we, if that worked, all the money we spent the last couple decades, we would be the leanest, fittest uh, world, community in the world, right? But we're not. Number f the fourth part of engage is find your tribe. You've got a tribe here. Plug into it. Come to the dance party. I want to tell you, Alice, I have no beat. I can hardly clap, just so you know, and this is true. And so I, I, if you see me not clapping, it's because I'm, I don't want to mess up the rhythm because I just did not get rhythm. Engage. If you want to heal your heart, even when you're lonely, 
When you think about lonely, depression, anxiety, I see it every single day in my office. And what's sad, I have a foundation called Big Shifts Foundation to help make generational change to five to 30 year olds through whole person health because they are lonely and they are sad and they have anxiety and they are depressed and you and I have got to show them the way out. And when you don't feel like it, you get out of bed and you come to be in the vibration. Yes, you can get the message streaming it, but you, there's no replacement for feeling the energy of the Holy Spirit in this place today. I've got chills up my body right now thinking about the vibration and once again how your music team poured into me with one of my favorite artists, David, Daniel Nemod. Nemod. So you've got to find your tribe, but then you've got to plug into them. And after you do that, you're going to get energy. And you're going to be more mindful of the way you're fueling your body. You're going to be more mindful of, of the stuff you have in your house. One of my favorite people I follow on social is becoming a minimalist. In my perfect world, I'd have about five dresses, five outfits, and five pairs of shorts, and five pairs of pajamas. One for each day of the week. I'd like to actually label them, but that might be a little too OCD for some of you. <laughs> I'm not a four on the Enneagram, so I could deal with that. It's funny. I love the fours on the Enneagram get that because there's no way they could do that. They've got to have variety. So, so for your tribe's important, but I want you to have energy because we need you to show up. We need you to play full out. It's going to take 2.5 generations to change the crisis we're in. It's not just a mental health crisis or, or violence crisis. It is a disease because we are disconnected from who we really are and whose we really are. And after you do that, you think about how can I enrich? And when I look back on my journey, I know without a doubt that in every moment I thought I was dropping, God put somebody right underneath me. Whether it was the nun, whether it was the gal Ruth who made my clothes, whether it was Dr. Lakin, Dr. Guinea, the Finkston family, my Women Who Means Business friends. If you will take time to just take a deep breath, you will see the magic too. And you, then you think, how can I give back? But you can't give when you're empty. So I'm here giving from my overflow. I'm not going to lose any, uh, any health over this. I'm not going to lose any finances over this. I'm not going to lose any time over this. Because I'm coming to you from a full perspective. Because I'm on purpose and I know exactly what I'm here to do. Because I've been putting the small, I've been doing, putting the odds in my favor by making small changes that have put big shifts in my life. If I can do it, a small town guru, girl that grew up in poverty through the sexual abuse, through the, the violence of, I remember leaving the house in the middle of the night because of my first alcoholic father, from my mother leaving us at the age of 17 for her fourth husband. If I can do it, you can too. Bless all of you. Bless this community and the work you're doing on the planet. I'm, I've been watching you from afar. I'm so proud of you. Thank you for having me. God bless you all.
got nothing good to hear. You look at my 